I'm very passionate about all aspects of learning, and partly because that you know that moment when you think an interesting thought is just such a wonderful experience that I want to have that often, and I want to help other people have that. And then secondly. I, I'm the first, I would say, first generation that grew up with the internet and so when you think about the internet's potential to change the way we live and work, uh, learning kind of sits right in the middle there. The ability to connect to this wealth of resources and millions of other people to learn from and learn with is just kind of fantastic and so learning seemed like an obvious place to uh, be interested in. In 1985, the president of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology founded the MIT Media Lab. Its purpose was to design technologies for people to create a better future. Since then, countless technology applications, ranging from wireless networks to electronic music and holography, have been inspired by the Media Lab. On the banks of Charles River in the City of Science of Boston, the lab also creates social concepts such as the one laptop per child or playful systems. One of the main emphasis of the lab has always been how people learn. Philip Schmidt is the lab's pioneer in the field of learning. He is the co-founder of the Peer-to-Peer -peer University and created the Media Lab's first online course on learning creative learning. He will share with us his insights on how to learn. Uh, for the next few minutes, I would like to talk to you about the topic of learning and how it relates to innovation. And I thought it might be nice to do that and give you a tour of the place where I work because many of the ideas that I'm going to talk about relate directly both to the building but also the institution uh, that I work in. Um, behind me is the MIT Media Lab and we're going to take a quick tour through the lab and look at some of the rooms and then end up at my desk. Let's go inside. The Media Lab has always been famous for technology and innovation and, and many of the projects that have come out of this place have ended up being used by millions of people all over the world. But from the very beginning, the Media Lab was also a special place for learning. Um, and here downstairs in the lobby, we often exhibit some of the work that's going on. We share it with other people. And right now, it's a very fitting exhibition because you'll see images of three of the pioneers of the Media Lab and Seymour Papert is one of them and he really is the pioneer of learning at the Media Lab. He was a founding faculty member and he developed some of the um, foundational ideas around how children can learn with technology and how technology can enable us to learn in new and different ways to explore our creativity and um, kind of play with the world through the means of electronics in different ways. And when we talk about learning at the Media Lab, in the context of innovation, we talk about it as having four principles. Projects, peers, passion, and play. And those four principles make up the framework of creative learning. And creative learning is not the same as innovation, but the people who come to study here end up being amazing innovators. And it's a great framework for innovators to develop the skills that they need afterwards to solve problems, to ask new questions, to understand problems that others haven't tackled and develop solutions for them. So let's go inside. In many ways, the design of the building also reflects the principles of learning. So as we come through the different floors, you'll see there's a lot of glass everywhere so that people can look into the labs, uh, they can see what other people are working on, they can make connections. And we're going to go and talk about the four P's at different places in the building now to highlight what we mean by them.
This is a great example for the projects P. Um, and what we mean by the projects P is that uh, the best way to learn is when you work on something that applies the things you're trying to learn. So there's some physical manifestation. In this case, it doesn't look like a farm, but this is the latest city farm that one of our graduate students has developed and is now filling with um, new way, equipment to grow new kinds of plants in new ways, faster, more nutritious, um, and is exporting this idea to other places around the world that are either challenging farming environments or have other special requirements uh, that make this kind of approach um, more appropriate. But what's interesting is this is essentially a student's project that's standing right here in the building for everyone to see. And often you'll see graduate students walking in and out and working on their project and kind of having that manifestation of their idea helps them learn about it in completely new ways than if they were just simulating it or they were thinking about it or writing about it. By building the project, there are lots of things that you discover that you didn't think of before. The next P that's very important for the Media Lab is the P for peers. And why are peers important for learning? Well, there are a number of reasons. One is, obviously, you know, the hardest problems today can't be solved by uh, one person alone. You need experts from different disciplines to work together. Uh, it's at that intersection of the different disciplines that new ideas get developed, that new solutions uh, are uh, invented, that we come up um, with the really interesting breakthrough innovations. And then secondly, in a world where collaborating is an, a, a very important skill, the best way to develop the skill is by practicing it. So if you're a student at the Media Lab or a researcher, you're constantly collaborating with others, with your peers, you're, communi you're learning to communicate with them, you're learning to ask questions, you're learning to listen. And those are skills that you get from peer learning that will then be very useful for innovators going forward afterwards. What's our next P? <laughs> passion. Passion is sometimes a little misunderstood. Uh, by passion, we just mean that if you work on things that are deeply meaningful to you, you will work harder, you will work through difficulties, you will go beyond just fulfilling what you think may be expected, but you will go as far as your own interests carry you. And so you end up doing better work uh, and you're enjoying it much more. So learning doesn't have to be hard. If things grab your passion, you, you'll, you'll want to work, you'll want to learn, you'll want to innovate uh, in this area. And um, this is a, um, something that we pay a lot of attention to in all the research groups at the lab. We, we try to help people really find the things that they're interested in, that they connect to in a deep and meaningful way, and then we help them work on those areas. And a great example is actually one of the faculty members here, Hugh Herr, who runs a group called Biomechatronics, and they work on uh, robotic prosthetics. And Hugh uh, is a very avid climber and has been his whole life. And he had a terrible accident as a teenager where he got stuck uh, on a mountain during bad weather. And uh, both of his lower limbs were amput amputated afterwards. And so he, uh, he you know, decided uh, that he was gonna keep climbing and he was gonna do whatever it takes to figure out how he could get back on the mountain. And in, in his case, it involved you know, developing the world's best robotic ankle um, joints that he wears around the lab. Um, but so just as one example for kind of the deep passion that many of the people here feel for their, for their, for their uh, focus, um, you know, it's something that really uh, affects your life or affects the life of the people that, that you care about. And so we encourage people when they're innovating to focus on things that, that mean a lot to them because it's a great way to support your learning and it's a great way to make sure that you're, the things that you're, that you're working on and innovating on uh, make sense. And last but not least, the fourth P of playful learning. And by playful, we don't necessarily mean games or sitting around and, and um, you know, uh, using colors and, and uh, um, uh, toys, but more that you learn in an environment that encourages risk taking so that it's safe to take risks, it's safe to experiment, there's no obviously right or wrong answer immediately, it's people, other people encourage you to you know, maybe make mistakes and learn from them, and kind of creating an environment where people learn in that way is one of the goals of the Media Lab. Um, and actually, let's go through to my desk and then maybe we can end with a quote from one of the 
founders of the Media Lab, which um, I recently came across, which I really loved. So he says, um, this is a little book that was put together by Media Lab faculty a, a few years ago, and where they all talk about their passion. And he says, my passion is passion itself. It comes in part from environments that encourage it, environments that do not stigmatize you for being wrong. And so I think that is a fantastic quote about learning and, and learning environments and the kind of learning environment that the Media Lab is. And uh, in the context of this online learning course, where you're thinking about innovation and preparing people to be innovators or being more innovative in their daily practice and in their work, I think the four P's of creative learning are, give you a really useful framework to think both about your own work, how are you approaching projects, do you have access to the right peers, um, are you working on things that really interest you, and are you doing it in an environment or can you create an environment where risk-taking is encouraged. I think all of those are important uh, for you to be the innovators that you could be. So I, I hope you enjoyed this little tour through the Media Lab and through creative learning. Um, and if you're ever in Cambridge, Massachusetts, please let us know and you can stop by.